When someone is trying to convince you to switch to Linux or maybe just use it as a server, one argument that is often brought up is that it is more secure than Windows and doesn't even need antivirus software. But how much of that is actually true? In today's world, firewalls, real-time threat protection against malicious programs and making sure that your device is encrypted in case it gets stolen are just some practices to keep your data safe and your PC operational. But why is it that Linux supposedly doesn't need those solutions? In today's video, we are going to talk about the security of Linux as your desktop or server, where the statement that Linux doesn't need protection software comes from, and ultimately, what you can do to keep yourself safe from malicious actors. And let's get straight into it. So why does Windows have a Microsoft Defender with a firewall, threat protection and similar in the first place? Well, believe it or not, Windows assumes that you are stupid. The easiest way to protect yourself against malicious actors, granted that you keep updating your system from time to time, is to just never download stuff. And when you do, that you are cautious about it. There are many different studies that often vary in their results. However, one clear conclusion can always be made. The most common attack vector with the highest success rate is always human error. Be it a phishing attack with an external link to log in with your credentials sent to your email address. Be it an Excel file with macros that executes commands in the background. Be it a cracked version of Windows, Microsoft Office, a pirated game or maybe you were tricked by a Google ad to download the right program from the full site. Human error and a lack of awareness are the most successful ways to hack someone. And if you are a malicious actor and want the user to install your program, you of course make it available for the most common used platform. So what does Microsoft Defender do? Well, first of all, you got the Windows Firewall that assumes that the network above does not restrict public access to your PC. You can think of a firewall like a typical brick wall. Without any opening, nothing from one side, like the internet, can communicate with the other side. If you open a port like 443 for encrypted web traffic, you basically take out a brick, allowing communication for that specific port. It's the most basic way for protection. However, if you were to download a program, then the program still gets sent through that open port. And that's where all of the other tools get involved. Microsoft Defender keeps a frequently updated database of current programs that are known to be malicious, but also monitors the behavior of programs, like why and what a program is trying to access. Sometimes you're being asked if you want to continue, other times it seems severe and it's being blocked completely. And even if a program were to get through all of these checks, then nowadays through technologies like virtual-based security, secure boot and similar, the severity of an attack can often be reduced or even stopped entirely. Seems like a good thing really. While Microsoft Defender is not bulletproof, it assists in making sure that if the user makes an error and downloads a malicious package, that an attack could be prevented. So why is it then that Linux doesn't need a tool like that? Well, in all honesty, it does. However, the story is a lot more complicated. First of all, and especially regarding servers, Linux assumes that the user knows what they are doing. So if you download something from the web, malicious or not, the assumption is that you did all the necessary checks yourself. Or it basically doesn't really assume anything, because you are in charge of your operating system, not the other way around. Then there is the fragmentation problem, of course. Not every Linux distribution uses the same paths for installing programs or dependencies. Sometimes those dependencies are differently called. Sometimes they use a different version or packages that seem to be the same actually aren't. That means that in contrast to Windows, malicious actors need to put in a lot more effort to get their malware running on Linux. Or they need to target a very specific system. Pair that with the amount of global desktop users that Linux has in contrast to Windows, which also mostly contains more cybersecurity aware folk, and the success rate of user error in contrast to just machine exploits, then I think you get the picture on why Linux isn't really in the need for defender tools like Windows is. However, less attacks doesn't mean no attacks, and it's the reason on why the most popular Linux distributions do actually ship endpoint protection tools out of the box, that just like Microsoft Defender on Windows, limit the reach a potentially malicious program can have if you were to install one. Fedora and other Red Hat related distributions use a solution called Security Enhanced Linux, short as eLinux, and its job is to protect critical services that could be exploited blocking services or ports by default, restricting default user access and the spread of exploits if a service were to be hijacked. 
Ubuntu and other Debian-based solutions typically rely on AppArmor, which does also protect core services, but isn't quite as strict as SE Linux. In either way, configuring and hardening their security is not easy for the average beginner and even subject to more experienced users making mistakes when setting up a lot of policies. But they do fulfill basic protection, which is a nice to have. One thing that might be worth mentioning is that neither of these solutions are a substitute for a firewall service, which on Linux is often pre-installed but not configured or even active. While they sometimes do stop services from using the port, they lack complexity and the configuration scope of a true firewall software. So that is something that you should be aware of. Not necessarily concerned, since you do have some protection. However, just protecting a device is sometimes not enough. Especially in corporations, it should be possible to monitor devices for malicious software and, if detected, isolate them, so that a virus or program doesn't spread to other PCs. This includes alerting systems, a place to collect and analyze logs and take action. Microsoft Endpoint Protection with Microsoft Defender, yeah, poor wording on their part, is one of these solutions and it does work on Linux. Not free, of course, and only for servers. Another popular endpoint protection suite is CrowdStrike Falcon. Yeah, the company that got famous because a faulty update took out all of the Windows machines that received it. In all honesty though, these are the solutions that you want to install if you truly want active protection from outside or even within your corporate network and monitor all of your endpoints without much effort. Sure, you can harden a Linux environment yourself, but you always need to be on the lookout for potential exploits, since despite human error being the most common form of performing malicious practices, at the end of the day, if actual hackers target a company, you want to have some measures in place, just in case. However, that's usually not a concern for you if you just use it on the personal computer. The TLDR is. Linux does in fact not not need antivirus and protection software. However, its architecture, stricter defaults and pre-installed security tools on a lot of different distributions and of course the fact that it is open source makes the job much harder for malicious actors. Dangerous packages might get spotted. It's a lot of work to create them and in the end there aren't enough people around for exploitation. Linux is more secure than Windows, yes. But the big part of that statement is that everyone can verify that it is, because it's open source. On Windows, no one knows how secure it is. There might be huge exploits that are just waiting to be found, but on Linux they often get detected earlier and patched before anyone gets to exploit them. It's really as simple as that. Anyway, that was just a side note, but what do you think of Linux and its security? Are there any important points that I missed? I'd really like to hear from you, so definitely make sure to leave a comment down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel and make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. I really wonder what's next in the scene, but up until then, all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.